Welcome to Skills to Pay Your Bills. Hi, I'm your host, Don Moraney, and today we have another great segment for you. But as you know, the purpose of Skills to Pay Your Bills is to change your mind about money so that you can change your financial future. And over the last few segments, we've been concentrating on something that we think is really important. Being in business for yourself, in our opinion, is the road to financial freedom. I'll say that again. Being in business for yourself is the road to financial freedom. Over the last few segments, we've talked to a variety of businesses. Most of them have been service businesses. Today, we're going to talk to somebody who works with their hands, a skilled artisan, if I may. Today, we're going to talk to Frank Williams. Frank is the owner of Frank's Fine Furniture. Frank, welcome to the Wealth Zone University. Thank you. So, Frank is, let's, let's do a couple of terms. People who work with their hands are normally considered to be craftsmen. But Frank is more than a craftsman. He's what we call an artisan. And an artisan is also a person who works with their hands, but they, more than a craftsman, they create the objects that they make. And that's where Frank excels. Frank excels in fact that he envisions, creates, and brings to life the furniture that he makes. So Frank's Fine Furniture, I'm going to start with a quote and then I'm going to ask you to tell the audience more about Frank okay. and Frank's Furniture. Frank's Fine Furniture, it says, let Frank's Fine Furniture make a home out of your living space. I love that. So Frank, tell us about you and tell us about Frank's Fine Furniture and take your time. Okay. Uh, I started Frank's Fine Furniture um, about 15, 20 years ago. I um, I'm a uh, self-taught, and when uh, I started back when I was in intermediate school, and taking just a an industrial arts class, mm -hmm. and after the industrial arts class, when it just progressed on into high school, and um, I found a passion for making things. Uh, I made a lot of stuff for my mom, whether it was nice or, or if it was good or not, she still accepted it. Uh, <laughs> that's, what mo that's what mothers do. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and then uh, from there, I started making furniture. Uh, now, I, I read that your first business venture was mm -hmm. called the strip joint. Yes. Is that right? Yes. Now, it, in my mind, I just went someplace that <laughs> doesn't have to do with furniture, but <laughs> tell me what the strip joint was. Okay. It was actually located locally here off of uh, 29, crossing Pan Am Shopping Center. Uh, it was in just Virginia. in a little building. Yes, it's a cleaner's now. And uh, people would bring in their furniture, and I would actually strip it is where it came from. I'd take it down to the wood, restain it, put new finish on it, and send it out the door as a brand new piece of furniture. Oh, wow. So you were like refurbishing I was furniture. refinishing mostly then, yes. Okay. So that's straight out of high school? Mm-hmm. Straight out of high school. Okay. All right. And um, I did that. Then I started... Um, Doing a little bit more, I started making dartboards, uh, uh, different types of knickknacks, uh, uh, um, lamps. Um, uh, I started making some uh, um, wine holders. Uh, but then you progressed to making large-scale furniture. How did you make that transition from making small things to making big things? Well, what happened was when I was doing the refinishing, um, a lot of people bought antiques in. Mm -hmm. and I looked at wow. them and I said, okay. I can make stuff similar to this. And I did. So I started making coffee tables, uh, end tables, nightstands, um, bookshelves, uh, just different types of uh, furniture there. I read you did curios and dressers. I did the and curios, I mean, yes. I did that. Real, real furniture. <laughs> right, right, yes. Wow. And um, it's a few other things uh, w within the furniture, the furniture side. Um, and so you, you uh, were natural with your hands, and then you actually began in high school to take classes that help you learn how to, to use your hands? Is yes. In they, uh, lack of a better term. Yes, in high school, they were, they were called, at the time then, industrial art classes. Mm -hmm. And they showed us how to, to use the saws, to use jigsaws, table saws, band saws, um, different things. And then 
we were able to create our own project for the end, our end grade. Okay. And um, that's when I, I, I got a better passion for what, what I liked. And once the product was done, I mean, I started with just straight pieces of wood and mm -hmm. screwed them all together and nailed them together. And then it came out as a product. So from there, I just got really happy with what I did. Okay. So I and just made your mom happy, too. I mean, her, <laughs> yeah, so just kept going from there. So uh, was the strip joint your first opportunity to then work with the public in terms of your woodworking? Yes, the strip okay. joint was the first. But in the strip joint, you weren't making anything. You, were, uh, you, you weren't creating anything. You were just... Repairing, refurbishing, is that, is that right? Or yes, but I did some small items then, though, okay. uh, like the dartboard case. Okay. Um, um, I did some shelves, not bookshelves, just you know, uh, shelves on the wall, some... Uh, um, uh, some but you were just getting into boards. some of the things that you needed. Yes, yes. Now, when you refurbish, do, do you just take it down to bare wood? I mean, how is that done? Yes, we take it all the way down to the bare wood. Um, sand it down, get all of the uh, chemicals off of it, mm -hmm. and then we'll t treat it, and then we'll put a stain on it, and then after the stain, we put a finish on it, and then it's a brand new piece of furniture. Okay, again. I want to get back to those por portions of it, but I don't know. I don't know that much about wood. I'm a mm -hmm. car guy, you mm -hmm. know. And if cars were made <laughs> out of wood, I'd, I'd uh -huh. be fine. But does wood deteriorate when it when it becomes furniture and it gets old? Does it stay the same? Do you have to do anything special to it to refurbish it? W what um, happens with wood? As long as you treat it, keep you know, cleaning it and, and everything, it'll, it'll last forever. It's a, an item where you can just pass down to your, your kids and your kids can take, pass it down. Okay. As long as you take care of it. You know, if you're just pretty much um, conditioning it, uh, polishing it, you know, just keeping it looking new and it'll last forever. So what kind of woods do you work with? I mean, I'm, I'm sure there are different types. Um, yes. The, my main type is oak. I like working with a lot of oak. Okay. Um, now I make a lot of stuff out of pine just for cost-wise because mm -hmm. it's a lot cheaper and it's just keeping the price down to, to be able to, you know, to sell out in the market. Okay. Um, using oak, it's a lot more expensive. Okay. Um, to, because of the type of wood or yes. the cost of the wood? Yes, because of the cost of okay. oak. Okay. Um, oak's a hardwood, so the hardwoods actually start costing more money. You know. Hardwood as opposed to? Softwood is pine. Softwood, okay. Yeah, pine is like a softwood. So let's just talk about that so that the, the audience understands what we're talking about in terms of your ability to craft mm -hmm. these things. Mm -hmm. What are, name some of the hardwoods and tell us why they consider uh, hardwoods. We have oak, mahogany, cherry, um, poplar. Um, you have to name them all. Right? Yeah, okay. <laughs> there's a lot of work. But, but why are they hardwoods as opposed to softwoods or, or anything else? Why are they hardwoods? They're, um... Hard question, right? <laughs> <laughs> they're hardwoods because they're hard. Uh, they're hard to work with, right? Yes, yes, yes. Um, the, uh, the hardwood is a... It's a different, more dense tree, tree altogether. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. a more a more dense tree. Um, the the pine trees are pretty much just like the pine trees that are in your yard, mm -hmm. uh, sort of. Mm -hmm. um, the ponderosa pines and stuff like that are are, are the, the softwoods that you're you're able to use. So, in addition to pine, what else would be a softwood um, that you, that you would use? Uh, Probably, there's not many more that we do. Um, okay. So pine is essentially the softwood you yes. use. Yes. I mean, you have... You Oak, have mahogany, you and cherry are the hardwoods you yes. use. And so that's basically your universe, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So where do you get your woods? Um, a lot of times um, I get them from your local stores. There's some sawmills that are local that I can go and I buy stuff from. Mm -hmm. um, recently, uh, there's a company that used to be in Manassas. It's a antique shop. I mean, a, it was called Lant Laws mm -hmm. Antiques, and they've shut down a long time ago, but they actually tore the building down like two or three months ago. Well, mm -hmm. maybe a little longer. Mm -hmm. And the whole building was all white oak. Okay. So I, I got a lot of that. So okay. I, I use... Legally, I hope. 
Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Had to ask. Yeah. So some of it, um, a lot of it I use in my, in my wine racks, uh, in the, uh, the jewelry holders. These are wine racks? Right yeah. Here? These, well, these are all jewelry, jewelry holders. holders. I'm sorry. Okay. I said the wrong side. No the, uh, the wine racks are, are made out of reclaimed wood, which okay. is reused, reused over wood. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, they're also made out of some oak plywood. So it's a combination, okay. and uh, it, it works out. I mean, it's you know it's good wood, mm -hmm. and I have a ton of it. So oh man, fantastic! And so the transition initially, you went from the strip shop doing refurbishing, mm -hmm. and then you started making big stuff because you said you saw the antiques and mm -hmm. you figured you could do mm -hmm. that. Was that difficult making furniture yourself? Because I understand you you designed some of the tools that you yes, worked with. Yes, the, the first. My first one was uh, a little difficult. Um, it was. It turned out okay. Okay. Um, the second one, it, it just started to. Uh, I guess um, I started to get the hang of it. Mm -hmm. um, it sometimes is a little difficult because of the pieces. You know, you're doing it by yourself. You know, you don't have another hand. So once you can figure out whether you make a new tool or something to hold something or you know something like that. Um, and uh, you're able to assemble it and, and put it all together, and it comes out a, a nice finished product once it's done. Okay. And so when you're working and designing, you actually now, after you've finished making the furniture, the big stuff, you transition into making smaller objects. Yes. The, the larger items, as far as in real wood furniture, it's really expensive. Mm-hmm. And, to, and to make. To make. And obviously and to then sell. to sell. Mm -hmm. Right. So a lot of people, you know, they, they kind of shy away from the amount that it costs for it. I mean, it's, again, like we said earlier, it's solid wood furniture. Mm -hmm. It's going to last forever. You can pass it down to the next person. Mm -hmm. um, Hold on a second, because we're about to go to break. When we come back, Frank and I are going to talk more about how we can um, get access to some of these grand pieces that he's making. But I do want to make the point before we leave that we're just not talking to a guy who works well with, with his hands. We're talking to a guy who actually dreams up these objects and then brings them to real life. That, that's the part that excites me. <laughs> and the fact that we know that they're great products makes it even better. I think you need to stay here. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back after this break. Hi, everyone. The objective of the Wealth Zone University is to change your mind about money to change your financial future. Hi, I'm your host, Don Moraney. In the Wealth Zone University, my guests and I talk about a wide variety of business, financial, and other worldly topics. We are seeking to both educate and entertain you. We emphasize that the information and discussions are my opinion, perspectives, and ideas, and those of our guests. We in no way intend to deliver or provide financial, tax, or business advice. You should consult with your tax, accounting, financial, insurance, and legal advisors regarding the impact, application, or pertinence of any topic or opinion that we share on the Wealth Zone University. Thank you for being a part of our audience, and please continue to communicate with us through email and Twitter because this is your show. Welcome back to the Wealth Zone University, and we're talking with Frank Williams, the owner of Frank's Fine Furniture, and, a, and an artisan who does things, who makes things um, by hand. And what I want to talk to Frank about is the creative process, because I understand, Frank, that the vast majority of stuff that you make comes out of your mind. You create it. Mm -hmm. And so tell me how that process works with you. Um, you know, you sit in the bathroom and just <laughs> thinking things up. Do you have a think tank? Uh, how, tell me how that works. Um, a lot of times for me, it's, it's trial and error. Okay. I, uh, I'll put something on a piece of paper. Uh, I'll do a sketch. Um, for instance, like the wine rack there in the back. Mm -hmm. um, it started looking completely different than what it does right now. I probably went through, I don't know, maybe eight drawings before I could get it in proportion. Okay. And uh, once I got it in proportion, then... It came out finished product. Um, well, okay, so let's let's use the wine uh, rack as mm -hmm. an example. 
first you thought about it, then you did drawings? Is that yes, it? I did um, just a regular pencil drawing mm -hmm. on a large piece of paper. And um, from there, I erased a lot, I turned <laughs> it, I, I squeezed it together <laughs> to, to get it in proportion. Um, then I took another piece of um, contact paper and I would cut it out and I would set it on the table to see what it looked like and if it didn't look right I'd crumble it up and start it again <laughs> or change something and then once I did it with the contact paper and got it close to where I would want it then I used styrofoam and I made it a sturdier piece where I can put the pegs and all that stuff together Okay. and then once that happened it went from the styrofoam which was the finished um, design mm -hmm. and then I made it out of the actual wood I just put it oh, on the wood okay. from there. So it's create, think about it, create it, design it, mm -hmm. and then a prototype. Yes. The styrofoam, it might want to be a prototype, and then the product. Yes. Oh, man, that, that's a full creative process. Mm -hmm. All right. So is that something that came natural to you? Did you learn? I know you're self-taught. Did you learn how to do that process over a period of years? I mean, how did you get to bring it? to the pro procedure that you've got now? Um, yes, I did learn it through the years. Um, it, it, it took a while. Mm -hmm. um, I've used everything from um, popsicle sticks <laughs> to, <laughs> I've used everything <laughs> to, to try to make you know a prototype or mm -hmm. make a piece. I mean, I've even made some of my large furniture in a, sm a small dollhouse scale. Okay just to make it so I could see what it would look like. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I mean, which didn't cost much, it was just you know, scraps of wood sure, sure. laying around and I put it all together and it would be a real small scale model. Wow. And then I would build some of the furniture from there also, the same way. Wow, so the difference between what an artisan as a craftsman does and what a general craftsman does is that your objects have functional value Mm -hmm. They have decorative value and they have aesthetic value, which means you can use them. If you're not using them, they look good. Yes. And if they, and, and in addition to that, they uh, last a long time and, and bring value to themselves. Yes. Yes. I mean, that's amazing. Out of just your thought process, you bring to life things that other people want, willing to pay for, and admire. Mm -hmm. And so moving from the big stuff to the small stuff, you told me, you basically went to a craft fair mm -hmm. and saw that the small stuff was more marketable. Yes. Tell me how that happened. I, um, <clears throat> I had made a lot of stuff in my shop from a long time ago, and it was just in boxes. And a friend of mine said, well, why don't you go to a craft show? So I took everything that was in a box that, and, and went to the show, put it on the table, and at the end of the day, everything was gone. All right, that's a good, good so start. So <laughs> people, people came up and said, do you have more? And from there, I just started making the same things that I sold, and then it just went on and on with different products, um, from uh, my earring holders mm -hmm. to the, the dog bones or the keychains, mm -hmm. the watch stands, um, to the wine racks, uh, to the, the little pieces of mm -hmm. coasters. Actually, what comes out of the wine racks are the round coasters that are there. When you cut the circles out, yes. so you, you repurpose, the, yes. <laughs> repurpose yes. the wood. I like yes. that. I so like we that. use those for coasters. Um, mostly uh, anything that I make, whatever piece of wood is left over, I try to make something out of it. Whether it's a, no, go ahead. Sorry, whether it's a, a glide or a post or, or whatever it is, I try not to waste anything. But I also read that Frank has a, another business. He's an entrepreneur called Frank's Installation Services. And you take the boxes from Frank's Installation Services mm -hmm. and you repurpose them in Frank's Fine Furniture. Yes. T tell me how that works. Well, all my shipping. Um, in Frank's uh, Installation. In, so well, Frank's Installation Services? Yes, Frank's tell Installation, we, um, we have a lot of boxes okay. from just doing commercial deliveries. And that's a commercial and, and relocation mm -hmm. service? Yes. Okay. Yes. So what we do instead of recycling, I mean, instead of taking everything to the dump, we take the boxes back to my shop, I cut all the boxes up, and each box I, I use for shipping. So I cut them to a certain size, make a whole new box out of them, and then they're back out again. Wow, that's what I call 
corporate social responsibility. And, you know, and recycling no, no at its best. <laughs> <laughs> no, no I cost. like that. I like that. And yeah. so when you go to a craft fair now, Mm -hmm. Is it mostly wine racks, or do the clients ask you what they want? Do you take, you know, what you feel they might sell? How, how do you determine? Well, I take I take wine racks, which sell. I take um, jewelry holders, which lately a lot of the jewelry holders and stuff are selling a lot. Jewelry holders, mm -hmm. the watch stands. Um, mm -hmm. We have wall-mounted um, jewelry holders. I, I make a lot of custom jewelry holders that clients just come in and mm -hmm. they ask me if I'll change one of my designs mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and add this, you know, add another bar or take a bar away. Um, then uh, some people will come up and say, do you, do you actually have a, 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 a tile holder or do you have this? And I'll say, well, maybe next time we come, we'll have, we'll have that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then usually they'll come back that next, at the next show okay. and they'll, they'll purchase it from All right. Oh man, that works. So actually you, custom make things for clients that come to you and say, can you do this for me? Mm -hmm. Can you do Within that reason, yes. So within yes. reason, okay. Mm -hmm. So something like a watch holder. Mm -hmm. And so I'm, I'm going to need one of these, let me <laughs> tell you, okay. This is what kind of wood? That's pine. That's pine, mm -hmm. softwood. Yes. Okay, cool. And then you have a finish and a gloss. Are th mm -hmm. Those are two different things? Yes. So tell me what a finish is and what a gloss is. The uh, first, it's just a bare wood, which is like the first piece there. Okay. And then from there, it gets a, a stain put on it, which in this case, it's it's golden oak. Okay. And then once the gold... Which gives us this lovely color. Yes. Okay. And then after that, it, the shine comes from, it's a polyurethane gloss. So I'd say there's oh, three okay. different types of colors. There's a satin, there's a semi-gloss, and a gloss as far as the finish. Mm -hmm. um, I, I have about 28 um, colors. Um, to choose from okay. you know, for different colors uh, to match whatever decor that you have in your house or whatever you're trying to match it to. Um, so let me just say, so the, the finish is when you put the color on the wood and then, am I, am I saying that right? The, and then the, the actual gloss? The stain, and the stain yeah. first. The, the stain, the finish is the stain mm -hmm. and then the gloss is where the it gloss, shines. It's all combined, the, the stain and the gloss is okay. the actual finish, all right. the whole thing. So if I buy something from you, do I tell you I want this finish and yes. this gloss? Is that, yes. that what happens? Yes. So I can actually come to you and say, Frank, um, I want a watch stand, but I want it down the middle with my initials on it, and mm -hmm. I want it this color, and I want it to look like that. Mm -hmm. Yes, and, you can. And so that I can customize what I, my piece to what I actually want. Yes. yes. Oh, right. with, fantastic. With on my, on my, I have an uh, online store, which okay. is Etsy. It's uh, Frank's Fine Furniture at Etsy.com. Okay. And um, you can go on there and you look, you pull up Frank's Fine Furniture, and I have a, a, a line of pieces. And on there, you can go on, and if you select, you know, a, a, it has finish and it has stain. So if mm -hmm. you go in and you select the stain, you can select it with none, mm -hmm. with no stain at all, just mm -hmm. bare wood. Mm -hmm. Or you can select. We have three standard colors, which is red mahogany, golden oak, and cherry. Mm -hmm. And if you, uh, and then there's also a, an option for optional color. Okay, and those are the twenty something those are the that 20 you mentioned. Ones that you can go to and you can pick from there. Okay. Um, whether you want a blue or green or yellow, you can find those colors. Mm -hmm. And then from there you go to finish. Again, if you just want a stain, with no finish, mm -hmm. so you just purchase it as an unfinished piece. And if you just want a finish, then you purchase it as a finish piece with wow. just a, a gloss or on, on top of the bare wood. Okay. And so whether it's online, whether it's craft shows, whether it's inside of your store, you design things. You also custom make things. Yes. And the whole, but the whole process is based upon what is best for the end user. Yes. And exactly, right? Mm -hmm. Wow, mm -hmm. that's fantastic. You know, I, I love the fact that you work with your hands. The only thing I get, can do with my hands is wash them, okay? <laughs> and so having somebody who actually creates things mm -hmm. and brings them to life is fine. And I, I'm working at a craft fair must be a lot of fun. Oh, it is. It's a lot of fun. You, you meet so many people. Um, people come up and they, a lot of times it's, it's about money, but 
it's not always about the money. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people walk up and they tell you that this is amazing or I've had professors come up and say, did you make this or how did you make this so smooth or how did you design this? And I, I make tools of my own okay. that you can't just buy in the store and, you, and just to finish off some of these things. Okay, so you design your own tools mm -hmm. to uh, maximize on your, on your end product. Yes. Wow. Yes. Do you see yourself expanding your line or the line that you have now is marketable and working for you? Oh, no, no. We're exp I'm expanding almost every day. Okay. I go do a different piece. If, if a new customer asks me to redesign one of my pieces, then usually I take that redesign and I'll put it back out there just to see if someone else is looking for the same type mm -hmm. of design. Mm -hmm. So it, it, I almost get a piece every day, a and new so piece. And so is a peer-to-peer, P2P mm -hmm. um, uh, e-commerce website. Yes. And they have your store on there and a whole bunch of other stores. I oh, yes, imagine. yes, yes. Exactly. Yes. And then you have your own website, mm -hmm. which everybody can see on the, the lower third. Mm -hmm. And, uh, hey, Frank, I really do appreciate it. I've got a couple of pieces that Frank has made for me, and I'm going to get a couple <laughs> more, more pieces. You see the wink? <laughs> well, after I con him out of the, the, the things that he needs to do. But seriously, I really do appreciate you coming in and hanging with me. It's Thank good you. to have somebody who actually works with their hands to show everybody that being in business can be a whole spectrum, you know, yes. mm -hmm. from everything. Folks, I really do hope that you enjoyed this segment, because I did. I really did. Mm -hmm. I learned much about wood. I learned about gloss. And I've already picked out the pieces that I'm taking home with me. <laughs> Don't tell Frank I said that. <laughs> but it's really important that you understand what we're trying to do here is make sure that you know that being in business, no matter what kind of business, mm -hmm. is your path to freedom. We'll see you soon. Take care.